Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette and our series, Is It Worth It? Today, we'll do a deep dive review on a highly requested piece of outerwear, the Trimaster jacket from Bellstaff. <laughs> Just like the Barber Jacket or the Burberry Trench Coat, which, by the way, you can see both our Is It Worth It videos of them here, the Trialmaster Bellstaff Jacket has become an iconic staple in a men's wardrobe that started out as a motorcycle jacket. It has a long-standing pedigree, and the jacket has changed very little over time, which qualifies it as a classic at the same time. Its whopping price tag has us wondering, is it really worth your money or not? For this review, we went to the Bellstaff website and purchased the traditional Trailmaster jacket in cotton wax, which retails for $595. We also got the Trailmaster Panther jacket, which is made out of leather in brown and retails for $1,795. Now, before we take a very close look at the jackets themselves, let's see if the history reveals why the price tag on those jackets is so high. In 1907, the first Isle of Man tourist trophy race was held in England. At the time, the conditions were very dusty and men would still wear the stiff collars that you know from that period. In combination with their regular jackets that were buttoned up all the way, it was a formal look on a very dirty race motorcycle course. Two years later, in 1909, the British Motorcycle Racing Club was founded. The same year, a certain Eli Belovich set up shop in Staffordshire with a business for reclaimed fabrics and rubber goods. During World War I, Belovich's company provided the British Army with waterproof fabric in forms of tents and capes. After the war ended, motorcycle racing resumed in England and it became somewhat of the golden age of motorcycle racing. In that spirit, Belovich formed the Belstaff brand in 1924 together with his son-in-law, Harry Grosberg, and he focused on motorcycle clothing. They were big into manufacturing waterproof outerwear for men and women. Eventually, Grosberg brought back Egyptian cotton, which was high quality, but when waxed, was more breathable than traditional rubber garments. At the same time, it was waterproofable. Belsev as a brand gained recognition, and by 1930, it included several famous motorcyclists and other adventurers among their client base. One of them was Joe Wright, the motorcycle lab record holder at Brooklands from 1925 to 1935. Another was the explorer and motorcyclist T.E. Lawrence. Some famous female Belstaff customers at the time were Aviatrix Amy Johnson, who was the first female pilot who flew solo from England to Australia, as well as aviatrix Amelia Earhart. Of course, with the start of World War II, Bellstaff started again producing for the military, but the demand was so high that it added over 600 workers to the company. After the war, they went back to what they knew best, which was motorcycle jackets, and in 1948, they created the now iconic Trialmaster jacket made out of a waxed cotton. It was originally designed to withstand the Scottish Six Days Trial, which was a very hard, extreme, on-road and off-road motorcycle race. The Trailmaster became popular very quickly, and by 1952, Ernesto Che Guevara wore a Trailmaster Belsaf jacket while riding on a motorcycle through South America for eight months, over 5,000 miles or 8,000 kilometers. With the help of such famous people, the Trailmaster Belsaf jacket was the number one seller of the company by 1960. In 1963, the famous Steve McQueen, who we covered in another video about personal sunglasses, which you can see here, wore a Trailmaster Belstaff jacket in the movie The Great Escape. In the movie, you can see the jacket in the famous motorcycle scene where he jumps over a barbed wire. As you probably know, McQueen was an avid dirt bike enthusiast, and there is an unconfirmed rumor that he has skipped the date with Ali McGraw because he preferred to wax his Trailmaster Bellstaff jacket instead. In 1969, Bellstaff underwent somewhat of a rebrand and introduced the Phoenix as the brand logo. But in the 1990s, Bellstaff survives a sagging demand for his jacket and the disappearance of the British textile market. The company Belsaf changed hands a few times, but it is now owned by the largest privately held company in the UK called Ineos. In the last few years, Belsaf really turned the brand around and it was often featured in movies such as Mission Impossible 3 through product placement, 
but it also became more of a lifestyle and couture brand that focuses on British heritage. In 2018, the Dramaster jacket celebrated its 70th birthday, and it's still a popular jacket in the lineup of belt staff. Of course, today they offer a range of different jackets, but overall, they're more about casual sports wear for men that is inspired by the motorcycle history. With all that history, let's now focus on the jackets themselves, starting with the waxed cotton version, the original Trial Master. In the US, it retails for $595, in Europe for 495 euros, in Britain for 450 British pounds. It comes in a greater color variety than most men's jackets, including plaque, red, navy, olive, and a military green that they call capers. The Trailmaster's iconic design include four roomy patch pockets that have flaps you can push down with snap buttons, a belt, you have a throat latch, as well as pads on the elbows and shoulder reinforcements. Unlike most other jackets I try on, I was surprised by the length in the sleeve of this jacket, which comes down to 27 inches measured from the seam. That's about 16 and a half centimeters and quite a bit longer than what you get, for example, from Barber. Again, if you want to check out that is it worth it, you can do so here. The size I chose for both jackets is a 44 US, 54 European, or extra, extra large. I was surprised when I saw that because overall, it has a rather slim fit. If I compared it to anything from Barber in the same size group, the bell staff is a lot slimmer. At the same time, the same size has longer arms. Right now, I'm wearing a polo shirt underneath, but I could add a thicker sweater and it would still work, especially with the adjustable belt that has six holes. I really like the high cut arm holes, which allow a great range of movement. And I can see why they do that, because when you're on a motorcycle, you have your arms up and you want to be comfortable even when you ride the bike. Overall, the sleeves are cut pretty trim. For my taste, they could be cut a little fuller, especially in the biceps area. But then again, I'm someone who has an above average upper arm measurement. I got the red version of the cotton wax jacket simply because I liked that they had a bolder color choice available. The Balsaf Trailmaster is quite long, measuring in at 32 and a half inches from just underneath your collar. That's about 82 and a half centimeters. Because it is so long, the zipper is placed a little higher and doesn't go all the way down, so it's a little more flexible when you sit and you can see that someone thought through the design of this jacket. The red waxed outer shell is made out of 100% cotton and supplied by the British Mulrain Company. It's a good traditional fabric that ages well over time and it develops a patina. It's maybe not the most breathable out there anymore because today you can have durable water repellents and there's all sorts of functional wear, but this is old school. It's meant to age and a lot of people just like the look of them, especially when it's many years old and has been rewaxed a few times. Interestingly, it has those little rivets underneath your armpit that are supposed to probably cool you down, but since they're not really incorporated into the lining, I doubt that they're highly effective. Just like any other wax cotton jacket, it feels a bit stiff at first, but once you wear it, it not only develops a nice patina, but it also gets a little softer. On the inside of a jacket, you can find a nice plaid cotton lining, again, 100% cotton. The sleeves, on the other hand, are solid colored, made out of 100% viscose, so nothing sticks and it's all very smooth when you put it on and when you wear it. On a positive note, I couldn't find any plastic parts on this jacket. They're all metal, which is quite nice. The zipper is made by YKK, just like on the jackets of Canada Goose or Montclair. And just like the ones from Barber, they're also made out of metal. As I mentioned before, YKK is a big standard. It's relatively inexpensive. You can find it everywhere, including on Amazon, but it's not the highest zipper quality you can find out there. Right out of the box, it's zipped up beautifully, much better experience than let's say with Canada Goose. So with the zipper not reaching all the way down, it gives you that extra flare, which is great for guys like me who have a big bum, so you get a little flare without creating any wrinkles. If you're slimmer or if you want to close it all the way, there is a snap button at the bottom, so you get a clean, straight look. The Trailmaster Bellstaff is designed to make you feel like a debonair rebel. Because of that, it's not meant to be worn over a sport coat, a blazer, or a suit. Instead, it's better with a sweater, maybe a t-shirt, a polo shirt, or maybe a cardigan. 
The styling is very old school motorcycle, especially with the angled pocket on the left side, meant for people who are right-handed so they can more easily reach in the pocket when they're on the bike. Now, even though that's a classic look, it's really disadvantageous for people who are left-handed because the left pocket is at a weird angle. With its big roomy pockets, it is quite practical. It's a bit more sporty and casual. In my opinion, it has a distinctive vintage edge look. And because of that, it's best paired with denim and boots. Of course, it also works great with Oxford cloth button down shirts and maybe a sweater or a vest. Because it's a wax jacket, it's a little more high maintenance. It can be washed, bleached, or exposed to any high heat such as an iron. Otherwise, it will really damage the jacket. Instead, it needs to be re-waxed occasionally, depending on how often you wear it. Some people go a few years in between, others do it every year. The whole brand Bellstaff is very big about their British heritage. Every snap button says Bellstaff England. The hang tag on the inside advertises the British Milrain fabric. Yet, if you look for the very small made-in tag, you find that it's made in Romania of all places. If you have followed this channel for a while, you know that good quality products can be made anywhere. Romania has a robust textile sector, but chances are they move production there not because of the high quality standards, but because of the much lower labor costs. Also, considering the high retail price and the really strong emphasis on the British heritage, I find it a bit disappointing, to be honest. Frankly, with that marketing, I would have expected nothing but made in England, or at least the UK. While there are emerging brands who provide lifetime warranties and guarantees for their garments, Bellstaff only has a 24-month warranty on their jacket. So now let's take a closer look at the Trailmaster Panther jacket, which is made out of leather. The retail price for this jacket is $1,795, €1,495, or British pounds. If you do the math, that's roughly three times the price of the cotton wax jacket. When we bought it at the Bellstaff website, it was available in black, a black brown, and a cognac brown color, which was lighter. It seems like they sometimes switch colors around, especially the brown ones, but you always should be able to find a black and some version of a brown. Even though they're technically not exactly the same jacket, they're very, very similar, so I just want to highlight the differences in those two jackets. Obviously, the biggest one is the leather. To my surprise, neither the website nor the hang tags actually tell me what animal this letter was made from. Seeing it in person, I don't think it's a calf letter. I also don't think it's a bison or buffalo leather, but a regular cowhide. Based on a touch and feel, I think it's a chrome tanned leather. According to Bellstaff, it is waxed and then polished by hand before it is tumbled to achieve this wonderful, deep, colorful look of the leather. I really like the waxy, crackling finish. It's not as extreme as you might know it from some upholstery leather or some leather bags we covered in the past, but it's just really beautiful to see the lighter texture of the leather. It's not top-coated. It looks like an aniline-dyed leather that is just finished in a beautiful way, which is really ideal for a leather jacket. The leather smells like leather and wax, and it feels a bit waxy. It is not super soft, but also not super stiff. So it, for me, has the right balance for a leather jacket that is a mix of comfort, but also longevity. For example, if you compare it to soft lambskin jackets, they're really soft, but they show the wear very quickly and age very poorly. Right out of the box, I could tell that a leather jacket was a lot heavier. When I weighed it, it came in at 2,350 grams, which is about five and a quarter pounds versus 1,530 grams for the wax jacket, which is about three and a third of a pound. Overall, I've definitely held heavier, thicker leather jackets. The Belsaf Trimaster Panther is not the heaviest one out there, but it's also not super lightweight. It really strikes that well-balanced middle ground. Of course, we also tested it for its water repellency, and it seemed almost better than the cotton wax jacket, which I was impressed by. In terms of the cut, the Trailmaster leather jacket at first glance looks exactly identical. The sleeve length measures in at 27 inches, which again is 68 and a half centimeters, just like the cotton wax jacket. 
Interestingly, when I put it on, it definitely felt different. It felt roomier in the arm and it is cut a bit wider. I also think that this leather is a little more stretchy and has a little more give than a stiff cotton waxed fabric. Because of that, I find this jacket a lot more comfortable to wear, even though it's heavier than the cotton version. I was surprised that the leather jacket was one inch or 2.5 centimeters shorter, coming in at 31 and a half inches or 80 centimeters. Also, the collar was a bit shorter, while on the cotton wax jacket, it was a little bit over two inches or five centimeters. It was slightly under two inches on the leather jacket. Overall, the seams on the jacket seem to be all identical, except for the back, because the leather jacket has a split seam versus the fabric version has a solid back. The reason for that is simply leather consumption. If you would cut a piece without a middle seam, the leather consumption would go up and therefore the production costs. Now, considering this jacket retails at almost $1,800, I would have been okay without the middle center seam in the back. When it comes to little details, overall, the jackets are very, very similar. Cotton lining, they both have viscose sleeves and the snap buttons seem to be made out of the same material, just like the zippers. It's just a color that's slightly different. They also both have the angled chest pocket, but if you look at the details, such as the collar tip lining or your sleeve tip lining, the leather panther jacket has a dark brown corduroy versus the cotton jacket, which has more of a brushed cotton fabric there. Also, if you take a closer look at the pocket and the way they're sewn, the cotton one seems slightly roomier and with a slightly different construction than the leather pockets. The leather pockets also have rounded corners, which is nice because they won't wear prematurely. Another detail I like on both jackets is that you can have the snap buttons to make it tighter. Overall, I think they could be even tighter than they are, but it allows you to wear gloves or not get a little air or a little breeze in your sleeve or not, depending on the temperature outside. Interestingly, the logo was a little different. While the cotton jacket has a contrasting fabric logo, the leather jacket has a tone-in-tone -tone leather logo, which is less contrasty and preferable in my opinion. I checked the website and two weeks after I bought this jacket, they seem to have a slightly different logo than the one I have. I don't know if that's a general change in model or it was just a one-off thing. Even though the zipper on a leather jacket is the same make and model as on a cotton jacket, it felt easier to zip up. So when I took a closer look, I saw that it's constructed in a slightly different way. While the cotton jacket has an extra flap and the zipper is underneath, the leather jacket has it more on the outside, so there's no extra layer. That makes it easier to zip up, but I also think when it rains really heavily, you get a little more protection with a cotton jacket. Interestingly, this jacket was made in Italy, once again, not in England, but at least Italy has a tradition of leather crafting and leather jacket making. So you could argue they went to Italy because of that, even though the price level is probably higher than in Romania, but still lower than in the UK. Probably the thing I was most disappointed about was the lack of information on their website or on the hang tags. For a price like that, I really expect to learn more about the materials that go into the jacket, maybe where they're sourced. And if you don't want to go that far, then maybe share what goes into them, right? I don't even know what animal this leather is made of. And of course, they don't mention if it's aniline dyed or chrome tanned or veg tanned. It's just up to the consumer to feel and decide what it is. Overall, it comes with the same 24 month warranty, which is a bit disappointing, but just looking at the jacket, I would say it's solidly built. It is not the most hardcore heavy duty jacket I've ever had. At the same time, I would still assume that this jacket was meant to last at least for a decade or more. So now that you know all the details and differences about the leather panther jacket and the regular trial master, let's answer the big question, is it worth it? The pros are, it's definitely iconic. It has a rich history of over 70 years and it provides you with a debonair rebel look that a lot of people want when they get this jacket. It was worn by Steve McQueen and Che Guevara. It works, it's practical and it has an attractive, slim, flattering cut. The leather is really nice. The Milrain fabric is very functional and they even offer a repair service, which is something that is nice, especially if you invest a lot of money into a product. On the flip side, the cons are that they're both more of transitional jackets. The wax cotton jacket 
more so than the leather one. There may be only six weeks out of the year where you can wear the cotton jacket. With the leather version, since it's a little heavier, maybe you can wear it a little more often for a little longer, but ultimately it depends on where you're located. In the UK, you may get away with it even as a winter jacket when you pair it with a heavy sweater. Where I live in the Midwest of the US, you definitely could not use this as a winter jacket. The cotton jacket is definitely not low maintenance. Even though some people don't do anything with it for two or three years or even more years, eventually you'll have to re-wax it, which takes some time and skill. The leather jacket is a little less maintenance intensive, especially since it has that water repellent quality to it. Overall, if you have to, Belsa recommends that you use a brush, a sponge, some cold water and some soap to clean it. I would probably also add just some leather product to get a nice sheen and nine look back to it. Obviously, it depends on how hard you are on your jackets, but I would assume you could probably go for five, six years without ever having to touch your leather jacket. As we mentioned, it is a more rugged, more sporty garment that doesn't work with blazers, suits, and sport coats, really, but that's not what it's meant for. I'd probably say it's a difficult jacket for men who are bigger or men who are shorter because it's cut rather slim, and if you're short and you wear a long jacket, it just makes your legs look even shorter, which is just unflattering overall. On top of that, the four big patch pockets as well as the throat latch are just visually too overwhelming. So if you're shorter, I say stay clear of the Trial Master jacket. If you're a bigger guy or if you have shorter arms, I think the belt staff just won't work for you. Instead, maybe go with something like Barber, which is just cut roomier with a shorter sleeve. Compared to other jackets, I think the upper sleeves are quite slim. So if you have slim arms, it works for you. If you have a bigger biceps, I'd stay clear of the cotton wax version because it just will be uncomfortable for you to wear. Now, last but not least, $595 for a cotton wax jacket is downright expensive. If you wanna look at the alternatives, there's the Barber A7 jacket out there, another jacket that was worn by Steve McQueen. Apparently, he liked the belt stuff more than the Barber, but just looking at them, they are very similar and that jacket retails for $429, which is quite a bit less than the Bellstaff Trailmaster. There are also many other brands, including Veteraneer from Ireland, a brand that has been around since 1951, which offers a similarly looking cotton wax jacket for about $170. That being said, if you plan to wear your Trailmaster cotton wax jacket for years to come, the cost per wear is not that much, and you can go with a real thing if you're suited for this slim-fitting, longer garment. With all that being said, in my mind, the Trailmaster cotton wax jacket is not worth it for the full retail price, especially considering the alternatives, the short warranty, the stiffness in the fabric, and the fact that it doesn't fit me 100%. Now, when we look at the leather jacket, it's slightly different. Between the cotton jacket and the leather jacket, I definitely much prefer the leather jacket, even though the cotton one is the more iconic of the two. I think the leather is really nice, and to my knowledge, there isn't another one-on-one -on -one copy of this kind of a jacket in leather. Leather is also harder to duplicate or replicate, so the, even though it may be a leather jacket, it may feel and look entirely different than this one. Maybe a shot perfecto could be an alternative with fewer pockets and has an angled zipper. It just looks entirely different. The only thing it has in common is that it's leather and a motorcycle jacket. Considering that the length is a little shorter than the cotton version, it can work for shorter men too. Because leather is thicker, I can also wear it for a longer time. And personally, I'm not a leather jacket fan or enthusiast at all, but I have to say, I was surprised that I really liked this jacket and the way it fit and felt when moving around and going about my day. I think a bespoke leather jacket will definitely set you back more. At the same time, off the rack, $1,800 is quite a bit to swallow. So despite it being more sporty than what I usually wear, I'm tempted to say it is worth it at the retail price simply because the leather is nice, it is iconic, it's great for travel, it has roomy pockets, and it just makes you look like a cool rebel. Personally, I'm not a motorcyclist, so I don't know how well it would hold up on a hardcore biking road trip. That being said, for my purposes, it will probably last for years to come, even though I'm still disappointed that a jacket at this price point just comes with a 24-month warranty. That's just a joke. With a price tag of almost $1,800, I 
I would probably have eventually returned this jacket simply because I wouldn't have gotten enough wear out of it to justify the investment. At the same time, when we purchased the jacket, for some reason, it was 60% off, which brought the price down to $718. Now, for that price, I think I'll keep the jacket, even though it is not a perfect fit for my wardrobe, but I like that it's different to what I usually have, and it just creates a more well-rounded wardrobe. And if I ever go on a motorcycle trip, this is the jacket I'm gonna wear. Of course, maybe I could do a follow-up video in five or 10 years to see how well it held up. That way, you get a real world review over a long period of time to see if the jacket is actually worth it or not. So in today's video, I'm obviously wearing the Trialmaster jacket from Bellstaff. The leather one is the Panther version in a cognac color, and the other one in cotton is the original Trialmaster in a red cotton canvas. I'm pairing it with a simple pair of denim jeans, a knitted polo shirt, and with a pair of brown boots that work well with a jacket. Now, you can pretty much wear any kind of boots, lighter colored ones, darker ones, matte ones, polished ones. I think boots are definitely the way to go with a belt staff trial master. And it's a clean, simple look. You could maybe also wear polo shirts or a turtleneck sweater. These are all good items to wear with this jacket. Thank <laughs> you.